We're taking a look at the low key meta pick for season one of Dragonflight. Honestly, man, these talents are super powerful. And if you followed the whole situation with Warrior from BFA into Shadowlands, you'd probably remember that they were pretty overpowered in battle for Azeroth. And a lot of the reason they were so overpowered was that they had like five or so talents and then they had like the Azerite traits and they all just synergized together so freaking well. So in Shadowlands, the way they nerfed it was they put all of the talents on the same row. Uh, and obviously they did some other things, but that was pretty big. So again, I do not play this spec. I have not played this spec once all since Shadowlands Alpha, uh, but I'm very uh, interested in tank discussion regardless. So you guys might know more than me and I encourage you to leave constructive remarks on this, but I'm going to give you my thoughts on this because even though I don't really know a lot about the spec right now, there's a lot of stuff that somebody who has always admired Warrior, is going to be very interested in. And right out of the gate, we're going to see it. They have stances returning. Now, uh, they've said that these are not like, you know, not even close to being ready, uh, but they, they're they in the game. So we'll definitely be checking that out at some point. And uh, right now, the proof of concept is going to be Battle Stance is a stance that just increases your critical strike chance and also makes you uh, not be slowed. Okay, which is, that's better than you think. Um, but yeah, so that would be like, you know, your basic uh, option. Then you would have defensive stance, a defensive combat state that reduces all damage you take by 20%, but makes you deal 10% less damage. And then we have Berser Berserk's mode, which is an aggressive combat state that increases the damage of your auto attacks by 5%. Now that doesn't seem very balanced. Uh, I think it should be crits, because uh, that seems like what Berserk would be. But anyway... Yeah, maybe that's good for somebody. I don't know. Like they don't these two don't seem balanced, but this is interesting because what are the odds anybody actually plays a tank in this state <laughs> stance or whatever you want to call it? Like I think no. I don't think anybody's going to use it, right? Uh because I mean like we know how people play tanks nowadays, right? Like nobody wants to be nerfed uh, by 10% damage wise, but you know, I suppose it's going to be all balanced around that. So let's just assume there's, you're going to change. I love the concept and uh, I'm very, very interested in seeing what it looks like because at worst, you know, this is a pretty cool thing for world content and stuff. But anyway, we're going to go quickly through all of these because there's some really interesting stuff here. Movement speed by 5%. That's kind of a big deal. A rallying cry super early. We have Intervene or Second Wind. Now, Second Wind, I'm again, I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure this is not a pro available talent. So, uh, yeah, I that's pretty good, I would say. Uh, but, of course, it's only when you're not taking damage, so it's not really going to work that well. Uh, but things like this, things like, remember what we're saying, things like this are very, 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 very interesting for prop. We have Berserker Rage, Standard, 5% Leech. That's just like more than what Blood DK got, 5%. They only, but Blood DK only got 2%, and it was 1% per talent point. Uh, double time, okay, standard talent. Inspiring presence, the duration and uh, health granted are increased from Rallying Cry. We have Spell Reflection, which is, again, a very, very powerful spell. Having that super early. Uh, Berserker Shout now also, wait, what is this do? Uh, it removes and grants immunity to fear, sap, and incapacitate. Now, this also, uh, I don't know what the difference is here. It doesn't seem like there is a difference. I think they might have commented on, on, on that, actually. Heroic Leap, super early. We have uh, Honed Reflexes. The cooldown of Pommel is reduced by one and a half seconds. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. We'll see what the actual cooldown is of it. Maybe, uh, maybe we won't. I think this one's actually just a warrior base spell. Uh, okay, we read that one. Uh, Storm Bolt or Titanic Throw. Titanic Throw is throws your weapon at the enemy, causing attack, uh, physical power, and uh, to it and five nearby enemies, which causes a high amount of threat. Well, that sounds cool. I mean, I don't really get... It's actually not that good. It's just like... It's Storm Bolt, at least based on the attack power scaling. But this is a short CD... Oh, oh, it's actually got a minimum range. That's interesting. So that's kind of cool. So that's like for, for pulling mobs. I quite like that. Uh, intimidating Shout. We have Impending Victory, which replaces Victory Rush, which we haven't seen on the tree. So that must be another warrior. You get that for free. Instantly, I've always liked Impending Victory. So that's one that I could see myself taking. There's also a Piercing Howl, which uh, Jambo likes to use that one. Furious Blows. Uh, damage of these spells is increased, which is, you know, pretty standard, but that could be good. 
Massacre, it's uh, executed is now usable on targets below 35% health. Wait, why? What does execute normally? I don't actually know. We have Rend, which I believe is an arms talent. Yeah, it says it even on there. Uh, so I don't know about that for prop, but we have Pain and Gain. When you take any damage, heal for 4.5% of your maximum health. This can only occur every 10 seconds. That's going to be pretty good. I don't know. That sounds like it might be in the game already, but that that's, that's pretty good. Thunderclap all the way this far. Intimidating Shout can withstand 200% more damage before breaking. Very good. Your auto attacks generate 50% more rage. Uh, that's definitely in the game right now. Uh, we have Shattering Throw or Bounding Stride, which is reduced to cooldown and Heroic Leap. And Heroic Leaps uh, now also increases your run speed. So that's interesting because I, I feel like those two don't really make any sense together. It feels like it should be... Uh, they should reconsider those two together. But anyway, Seismic Reverberations. If Whirlwind or Revenge hits three or more enemies, it hits them one additional time. This right side is very uh, offensively uh, capable. Huh? But here is where, is where things get very interesting. This is where things get very interesting. This is an old... I remember this in... I believe it was Wrath, maybe Kata. I can't remember exactly when. But this was incredibly good for our DPS warriors, Okay. And it's going to be very good for prop warriors. And I'll tell you why. Now, to be fair, the main reason it was crazy for back in the day was because there was armor potions. All right. Forever, there was armor potions that you could use, like from classic onward. And it would be better than strength potions for uh, warriors who ever had this. Armored to the teeth, you gain strength equal to 10% of your armor value. Now, now you guys know what's pretty uh, prevalent in a uh, prop warrior, right? Yeah, they get a lot of armor. So, yeah, that's going to be good. And then, obviously, strength you know, just double dips back into that. That's a really cool thing to see, one way or the other. I don't know if there's going to be armor potions. But whenever you can double dip like that, that's awesome. I love that. Blood and Thunder increases the damage of Thunderclap by 10%. And whenever you Thunderclap a target affected by your Rend, you also affect five nearby targets with Rend. That's a talent that relies on another talent but I'm ready to see that. We also have Crackling Thunder, which was one of the, uh, you know, that was popular back in the day. We have Crushing Force, damage of Shield Slam and Slam increased by 25%. So a couple of things to buff Shield Slam now. Maximum Rage increased by 30. We have Frothing Berserker, your abilities that cost Rage have a 20% chance to immediately refund 20% of the Rage cost. Uh, so presumably that will work with, uh, like, you know, Ignore Pain, I think, right? That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, one hand. This is this one makes no sense whatsoever. I just, this has got to be bugged. It says one-handed weapon specialization increases leech by ten percent. That that right? Okay. Or we could take daunting duelist. The first enemy you damage in combat is marked as your adversary, and you deal three percent more damage to them, and they deal one point five percent less to you. It's pretty cool. We'll see how. Obviously, something's up there. But now here we go. Now, come on, man. Is this real? Are we serious right now? This can't be real, right? You tell me Prop Warrior is going to get die by the sword? I mean, that's that's it, right? Like, we're done here. Prop Warrior's top tank. Like, I, I really feel like it. It's only a two-minute CD. And it's a 30% damage reduction. I mean, I don't really play arms, so I don't know what this is in Live WoW, but if, if Prop Warrior is going to get a 100% parry chance, on a two minute cooldown for eight seconds. That's it. Do we know of another tank that has like a parry CD on a two minute cooldown? Uh, yeah, we do. And what does their spell do? All oh, right. It's not a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that's pretty nuts though. I'm gonna tell you right now, if that goes in the game, that's pretty wild. Uh, cruel strikes. This one's really powerful. Increases critical strike chance by 4%. Freaking last three rows. Uh, anyway, here, here's another one. I got, is this real? Are we, are we real about this? Reinforced plates enforces, increases armor by 30% of your strength. Well, so they have this talent that gives you 30% uh, armor of your strength. And then they have this one where you gain strength equal to your armor. What happens? What, what how does that work? I don't understand that. Increases stamina by up to 10%. Haste by 4%. Increases damage while dual wielding, so that one's useless. This is like, uh, seemingly, it's going to be very interesting. Roar explosively in a 16-yard frontal cone, causing a lot of attack power damage and 
causing enemies to bleed for physical damage. Seems like it's going to just replace Dragon's Breath, which I'm shocked by, but yeah, Thunderous Roar. We also have Thunderous Aftershocks. Thunderous Roar knocks enemies down and causes two Aftershocks that deal extra damage, and each Aftershock hits grants additional rage. Knocking mobs down. We like that as a Prot Warrior. Uh, we also have Shockwave, which is surprisingly all the way down here. I mean, that really feels like a, more of a staple. This was always the big problem with uh, Arms and, and Fury guys. Once they lost Shockwave, it signaled a big shift away from them having really any utility at all. Um, and this doesn't really bode well for them. But I don't talk about those in this video. So, And then they have the uh, Rumbling Earth. This has always been the game. When Shockwave strikes at least three targets, its cooldown is reduced. Now here's another crazy one. Bitter Immunity. Three minute cooldown reduces, uh, restores 20% health instantly and removes all diseases, poisons, curses, and bleeds. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we have Avatar, which was a great television show. Uh, we also have um, Ravager here. Wait, we don't have Ravager here. Where is Ravager? Somewhere? Did I miss it? I don't even know. But anyway, it's Signet of the Tormented Kings. Bladestorm, Recklessness, Ravager, or Avatar randomly cast one of the other two abilities that reduce effectiveness, which is, I believe, a legendary now in Shadowlands. And then we also have Avatar increase the damage of Thunderclap by 50% and reduces its cooldown by 50%. And if you remember, that was a big part of why. Basically, they were just a DPS. In BFA, they basically were a damage dealer. Like, they had such access to damage that even actual DPS didn't have. Like, it's crazy. We have two-handed weapon specialization. Allows dual wield. <laughs> obviously, this is not. Okay, this is obviously not going to go in the game like this. Increases your damage dealt when using a single two-handed weapon by five. It's pretty powerful. But we have Spear of Bastion here, which is uh, pretty good to see that again. And Elysian Might, Spear of Bastion's duration is increased. While you remain within Spear of Bastion, your critical strike damage is increased. And uh, the other option is Piercing Verdict. Spear of Bastion's instant damage and rage generation are increased. So... That's pretty good. That's a really powerful a couple a couple of these things, man. Die by the sword, armored to the teeth, reinforced plates, extra stamina, bitter immunity. Okay, we got a lot of cool stuff for Prot Warrior just in that tree. Now we got Ignore Pain. We got Revenge. We got Demo Shout. We got Devastate, which is now like, it's actually kind of funny because like it's like they won't um oh wait okay I, yeah no there's devastator there okay i got this backwards i thought yeah anyway here's devastate we have last stand unnerving focus last stand increases your rage generation by 60 percent okay race for impact using shield slam increases your block value by 10 percent and the damage of your shield slam by 10 percent for nine seconds multiple applications of this effect may overlap here's a strategist strategist Devastate and Thunderclap, Revenge, and Execute have a 30% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Shield Slam. Pretty sure that's like a thing in the game. Best Serve Cold. Revenge deals 20% more damage or 50% more damage when your successful dodges or parries make it cost no rage. That's a talent, I believe. Now, it sounds really good. A lot more offense. Booming Voice. Demo Shout also generates 40 rage and increases the damage you deal to affected targets by 20 where we've seen that before another one of these bfa things right like really really powerful stuff we're getting to the point like it's feeling like they're stacking the deck again man challenging shout two minute cooldown taunts all enemies within 10 yards i think somebody said it was four minute cooldown on live so that's a pretty big change devastator this is just the talent here basically just removes devastate and makes it so your auto attacks use devastate instead i never really understood this to be honest <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's pretty interesting. Parry by up to 6%. We have Bloodborne, which is a video game. Bleed damage of Deep Wounds, Rend, and Thunderous Roars increased by 15%. Or Blood Surge, your periodic bleed effects. That's not a video game. Your periodic bleed effects have a chance to grant you 5 Rage. That's interesting. We have Fueled by Violence. <laughs> if you are healed for, th you are healed for 30% of the damage dealt by Deep Wounds. And Deep Wounds does not appear anywhere in the talent tree, so I'm assuming it's still a passive from whenever you Thunderclap, right? Okay, uh, Challenging Shout, Improve Challenging Shout, taunt all enemies within 12 yards to attack you and interrupt all spell casting within 12 yards. Okay, so they've already gotten a really big utility piece right here. This is a very, very powerful utility piece because realistically, you don't really need Challenging Shout, right? Like, it's pretty useless probably. 
I mean, I would imagine it's not very useful. Um, so now they have an AOE interrupt. Okay. On top of whatever else, you know, they have a stun and a fear. Show of force, revenge damage increased by 10% and it increases the damage of your next thunderclap by 25. So another uh, pretty much offense only. Increase the radius of Demo Shout by five yards. Each hit by Thunderclap reduces the remaining cooldown on Demo Shout. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Shield Wall. That's a good one. I like that spell. 40% damage reduction. 3.5 minute recharge. Is that normal? Uh, is that the normal time and everything? Shield Spiked or Spiked Shield. I mean, blocking an attack deals 20% of physical damage to the attacker. You do a lot of blocking, don't you? Is that right? Uh, last dance cooldown is uh, reduced by 10 seconds and it grants you a shield block effect for its duration. Pretty good combo right there. Improved heroic throw. Heroic throw inflicts deep wounds. Interesting. And, uh, brutal vitality. Uh, season one's percentage of your damage you deal adds to your active ignore pain. Okay. I ignore pain, honestly, uh, always going to be a powerful spell. So we'll see how it plays out. They have punish. Uh, shield slam decreases 20% increased air. Deals in 20% increased damage and reduces enemy damage against you. I think that's a talent now. They also have Juggernaut, which is Execute increases damage dealt by Execute for 3%, stacking up to 20 times. So, again, I mean, that's pretty much just like an offense-only one. We have Unbreakable Will. Show all grants one. They have a lot of choice talents, don't they? A lot of them. Show all gains one additional charge and grants 50% of its effect to all party members. I'm not surprised to see this here. I'm actually, uh, when they made the legendaries in Shadowlands and I saw that, I was like, that is one that I really hope I'll see, but nobody ever used it. That's, that's powerful, man, but it's only for party. So I don't know. I don't know. It's still really interesting to me because in Dragon Soul, the tier sets for the tanks were just like ridiculously overpowered. I really wish the blood DK got that one back as well. They also have a legendary for that, but again, zero use case. Shield Slam generates an additional 5 Rage and reduces the remaining cooldown of Shield Wall by 5 seconds. Now, if you could have both of those, <laughs> we'd have a lot to talk about. Anger Management. All right. Anyway, Enduring Defense. Shield Block will last 2 seconds longer or Sudden Death. Uh, your attacks have a chance to make your next execute cost no Rage, be usable any any target, and deal damage as if you spent 40 Rage. That's an interesting talent again, but offense only. Heavy repercussions. Shield slam generates three more rage and extends the duration of shield block or into the fray, gaining 2% haste. So yeah, pretty pretty. Much, if you guys can't uh, piece it all together, so far it looks like all the overpowered talents from BFA that were separated and changed to be not uh, something you can take. I mean, as of right now, it looks like you can take every single one of them. So uh, we'll see how they play out again, but uh, that's going to be interesting. And there's, we're not done here. Uh, in, enduring Alacrity, Stamina and Armor by uh, 5%. This is going up to 10%, and your Haste is another 4%. They're going to have a lot of Stamina and a lot of Armor, man. We also have uh, increases your Block Chance by 6% and your Block Value by 15 And again, that does uh, two stacks. So we're going to have 30% extra block value. We also have focused vigor, increasing strength and armor by 5%. So more amplifications to something that we already know is going to seem really, really, uh, you know, bolstered, I guess is the way to put it over there. Ironically, we're going to put it that way. Shield charge. This is an interesting one here. Charge to an enemy with your shield, dealing attack power, physical damage to it, and a little bit less attack power, physical damage to all enemies within 10 yards. It also stuns the primary target, and it generates 20 Rage. But it's got a 45-second cooldown. That's pretty much perfect. Seems like the perfect way to engage on any pack. So they're looking really good right now, man. I'm telling you what. Champion's Bulwark. Shield Charge grants you Shield Block for until canceled. Who is going to cancel this stuff? Like, tell me. Tell me what clown is going to cancel any of this. Why would you cancel it? Revenge also, uh, and generates, wait, it also casts... When you cast it, you get a shield block. It gives you a free revenge, and it generates an additional three hundred rage. Is that is that a number? Three? That's gotta be. That's a bug, right? Okay. Outburst consuming thirty rage grants a stack of seeing red, which transforms at one stack into outburst, causing your next shield slam or thunderclap to be two hundred percent more effective and grant ignore pain. Is that the set bonus? It sounds really familiar. 
Uh, but I don't know anything about Warrior right now. We have Indomitable, which I love. Your max health is increased by 10%, and every 10 rage you spend heals you for 1% of your maximum health. So they actually have like a solid amount of healing right now, dude. They have Indomitable. They have Bitter Immunity. Um, I thought it was another talent we just looked at. But yeah, they have a decent amount of self-healing, man. I mean, they got a lot of leech. This is going to be one-handed weapon specialization. But anyway, uh, they also have Never Surrender Your Block Chances increased by up to 20% based on your missing health. Spell Spell Block. Uh, you were able to block spells cast against you for 14 seconds. Are they battle scarred veteran? When your health is brought below 35%, you take 100% less damage. And healing you receive is increased by 100%. Now, it depends on how long this lasts, but... Anybody see it a little bit of a trend here? It's like they actually have all the blood decay shit, and it's just power creep. Like, it's just a better version. That's just like a better version of Will of Necropolis, right? It's just like a better version, because... If if Will and Necropolis could only occur once every 60 seconds, that would be fine. Like it actually would be fine because the likelihood of you needing it more than that, it's it's not, it's just like that's fine. I would take the hundred percent less damage. Is that is that a real number, dude? Are we actually saying a hundred percent less damage? Is that a real number? These these things can't be real, right? And then over here we have increased, we read this, I think, right? Yeah. And then Ravenger's actually over here. Uh, because it's a, I guess it's a, a probably a, a pro only, but maybe it's there for the other specs. And then we also have Storm of Steel increasing Ravager's duration. So Ravager still grants parry, right, or what? Uh, maybe not actually. It just deals damage now and generates rage. So, yeah, I don't know, man. To me, uh, out of the gate, it, you know, when I looked at, um, when I looked at Bear, you know, I didn't really make a video on Bear, but when I looked at Bear, I was like, oh, okay, they look kind of cool. They have like a couple cool things. Then I looked at Blood, and I'm like, I love Blood. Blood looks great. They have like three or four things I'm really interested in. Then I looked at Prop Pally and it was like, oh my God, they have so many cool things. It seems like they have so many cool things, right? Then I played it and I'm like, yeah, a lot of these cool things are just kind of cool. They're not very powerful. Well, now I'm looking at Prop Warrior and I'm like, they have not even cool things. They have like overpowered sounding things, things that are just ridiculous sounding. I haven't played it yet. Not going to probably have time with season four, but. You guys let me know if you play a prop warrior or if you're going to be playing a prop warrior in Dragonflight, let me know because this sounds, a lot of this sounds really broken and uh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm overthinking it. I mean, but there's a lot of talents that don't even exist right now, right? I mean, we got this here, Berserker Rage or Berserker Rage. What do you guys think about that one? I'm probably going to take both. I mean, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's a two talent or two charge thing. I don't know. They got a lot of broken stuff, though. A lot of things that don't seem to be ready. So it might even get crazier. I don't know, man. I really fear it because Warrior, as weird as it sounds, Warrior has one niche that I worry about. And that's where they're just an offense, where they're just a damage dealer. Because, you know, there's been like situations where both Blood and Vengeance and Prop Pally, they can have a little bit of that niche too. But the thing is, Prop Warrior's niche being offense only is like, usually on the back of their defense being broken too right when the, the few times it's happened over the years that's always the case and it's usually usually tempered by the fact that they're very weak to magic well now they have a spell called spell block so yeah let me know what you think